Welcome back to my garage. A lot of stuff to cover in this video. I've even made some lists here to keep keep track. First up, the engine. What's next for this engine? This system is ready. The primary carb is ready. The secondary is, well, not actually ready, but um, I know what to do here. I might use this one or make something out of metal. Someone was showing pictures of doing that for me, but I haven't heard from them in a, a long while. The variator, we'll, we'll get back to that. The cylinder, I, I've pretty much decided that, um, that now that I'm going to run methanol and nitromethane alcohol, I don't need the, um, the cooling benefits of a solid cylinder with a liner. So, um, no, not with a liner, but with, uh, with plating. So I think I'm going to bore it out Let's see if I can turn it around here. Bore it out and um, insert a liner, which will be of aluminium and, um, and nickel silicon carbide plated. This means I have this cylinder and a second cylinder, which uh, will be usable, probably. This one is usable and um, just out of round, but if I get it properly bored and uh, insert a liner, perfect. The other one I think will be perfect too. We need an exhaust and we need an exhaust flange. And that's what I'm going to talk about in a bit. But first, the elephant in the room, or the many elephants in this room, our dyno. So I know a lot of people have sent me mails ordering our dynos because I have this web page where you can send me a mail and order an Arduino, the Arduino card. That's my do it yourself dyno. Uh, PCB which you will have to solder components on and you can use for a do-it-yourself dyno like I've built so uh, There's just not enough time for me to do the order handling and uh, I've decided to not make any more of them, but I've made the files available They're down in the description and you can have the cards produced at your Your PCB supplier of choice. There's many to choose from and it's not expensive at all this brings me to replying to mails and messages, comments, etc, etc. Complete disaster. I'm just... I used to be bad at it, now I'm just useless. It's a combination of too much for me to handle and procrastination. So that's my fault. Lack of organizing everything. I'm gonna get better at it. I'm gonna, gonna start replying to mails as they come in, not procrastinate and I'll do it later or tomorrow. And at least once a day, I'm gonna sit down and reply to stuff to not so that it won't pile up and it starts feeling like too much. And then you know this visual cycle where you do nothing because because it's too much. Transmission, transmission options. That's kind of what got me back in the game here now. And um, it started with uh, you saw the previous video where I was uh, was trying out a stupid idea with. Uh, with a rubber band and trying to control electronically control tension by by using a rubber twisting a rubber band from that came this idea which is uh, so a lot of people you can uh, follow me on instagram and because there's been a lot of discussion on instagram lately about these ideas I ideas and um so a lot of people have said that you can just use a ball screw or other screw and um and a stepper or a servo and control it directly you won't need it will be fast enough you won't need any springs or rubber bands or anything like that in between and that might probably be right if not i uh, i came up with this uh, idea i think i made a, a little drawing here of the idea idea i'm always saying id not idea idea probably sounds wrong both ways anyways it's um it's a system with a um, with a vacuum or low pressure in between two cylinders by pulling this thing more out or or pushing it in you get a varying like varying spring spring tension on this side and there will be um like this could be threaded and there could be a stepper or a servo here, which move that piston in, uh, piston in and out. So this would be both linear action and spring tension at once. And the whole thing would be mounted uh, like 
this to tension the engine. I've been considering a normal gearbox, like what you find on most motorcycles or cars or whatever. Uh, mainly due to efficiency, a little bit sound, sounds better, but uh, mostly efficiency. Because uh, rubber V-belt CVTs are uh, really inefficient. There are some complications with that approach. It would have to be really closely spaced for the narrow power band in this uh, engine to... Um, to work for it to work with the narrow narrow power band there's also my injection system which is really simple and really meant to just work at a single rpm single load scenario so um, a normal gearbox would mean i couldn't use the the my simple my simple continuous injection system and i would have to have to figure out something else and in a two stroke in a really high revving two stroke injection is not for the faint-hearted. I'm even researching bicycle gear train, train technology and um, to see if there's something I can use in that from that realm. Sounds uh, ridiculous, I know, and uh, but just how funny would it be if uh, if the world's fastest two-stroke had a derailleur or two derailleurs and two big like cassettes of gears? <laughs> just a few days ago, this idea of um, of how to make a variator that can use a timing belt popped into my head. I'll pick up a timing belt here and show you. <coughs> Thought I had a timing belt, I didn't. It's those flat belts with the, with teeth, and they're really efficient. More efficient than the than a, than gears. More efficient, certainly more efficient than a V belt variator. So mighty is the timing belt variator. I've drawn it up in Fusion. I'll pick up my computer and I'll show you. This is the this is version one of that timing belt variator. It looks very much like a normal variator or a roller variator. It has uh, rollers. Those are the weights that push on on this uh, this pressure plate or whatever you want to call that. Uh, they ride in uh, these curved grooves, and as they get pushed out by a um, centrifugal force or centrifugal force they push against this plate which is uh, secured to the bushing here and this movable sheave moves towards this stationary sheave the difference between this one and uh, a normal v-belt variator is this carrier carrier sliders Let's see if I can turn off the turn off things here so it's easier to see so here you can see them there's six carriers here they have a short end here riding in in their grooves there in the bushing the groove bushing grooves and there's longer pieces sticking into the grooves on this side and that's because they're kind of sandwiched between that sheave and the other sheave and this plate here if I'll remove this one you can see they're butted against this one and uh, the reason for that is that the belt isn't wrapping this pulley fully. There's probably at least two, maybe three of these with no belt supporting them. And if there was nothing keeping them from flying out, they would fly just fly out. So this uh, protruding bit here is keeping them from flying anywhere. It makes so that uh, all of them have to stay at the same position all the time. They can't, one can't be further out than the other. So this might work. It was pointed out on Instagram when we discussed this, when I posted pictures, that having just six of these might cause the belt to kind of fall down every time one of these hits the peak and starts traveling downwards. And that might cause kind of a hammering action and, uh, and be a problem. I'm not sure if it will be, uh, or if it would be, uh, probably one solution would be to add idler 
rollers here and here not in the variator but like under the belt but outside the variator not part of the variator that would hold the belt or make the belt not dip lower than the than the top of this the top one the top of the top one and maybe a roller in here to keep it from dipping in like further in than uh, the bottom one so that could be a solution if that would be a problem but there's a version there's a version 2 here so here's version 2 there's a lot of similarities with the version 1 a big difference is there's not 6 but uh, 12 sliders let's see here if I can remove these parts you can see here that there's now a full circumference of um, of toothed, uh, toothed carrier sliders when it's fully at the f in first gear fully extended there will there will be gaps between them but not not too big of gaps the, the gaps won't be too big and maybe that's better might work might not work I've uh, removed the rollers completely I don't think they're necessary for this to function because there's a lot of mass in all of these sliders and they will do a good job pushing against this plate and riding up so sliding up and forcing this sheave closer to this sheave I'm not sure if it's called sheave I think that was something I picked up at Moped Army so I think it's sheave there's springs here there are uh, pull springs and there to counteract the, um, the pulling force or counteract the force of these trying to push out and uh, and kind of to fine tune the force here because you won't need as much uh, belt tension with uh, with a timing belt versus a V belt a typical V belt variator it needs it needs a lot of um, belt tension not so with um, with the timing belt because there's there's physical like it doesn't it doesn't rely on friction to um, to not slip it relies on this like teeth like a like a chain but a belt <laughs> so this might work this might work might I think there's three possible outcomes here first outcome the belt keeps these from moving at all and no matter what kind of force they try to exert and move outwards they can't move because the force because the belt just locks them together with the teeth or it just goes to hell and all the the belt just slips and everything just slides around and there's just a mess third option they sh they can like the belt will slip just enough to slip into the next groove and it will be kind of a stepped a stepped continuously variable uh, transmission i'm going to 3d print a prototype of this system and see if i can get any information from that if it works or if the 3d print is too weak i'll cast a prototype that brings me back to the exhaust flange i will also cast an exhaust flange so design it 3d print and cast it just like i did with the cylinder should be made of steel probably for uh, for like wear but i can use my plating setup and electroplate it with nickel silicon carbide and the wear surfaces should be really resilient from wear 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 yeah okay been a lot of talk today will be a lot more work and not so much talk in um, in upcoming videos thanks for watching